space sounds very scary. Ambience. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Nova Kane here after a bit of a summer break. It is hot here in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So I've I've turned off all the fans to give you uh, the best audio experience that I can. And tonight we're going to be giving you Helion, which was very kindly bought for me on Steam uh, via Sigvar. So thank you very much Sigvar. Uh, for throwing this game my way. It's obviously it's in an alpha state. That's why I'm showing you this this wonderful little text box that Greets you when you arrive uh, Represents the basic vision behind this dark world. So Helion is a space survival game first person It's looking good. It's buggy as hell, but it is an alpha version. So let's give it some time uh, We're gonna be doing a little bit of the early gameplay showing you what the co key concepts are what the uh, gameplay mechanics are and moving through as we ex explore the Helion system. Uh, soundtrack's really good. Unfortunately, we don't have any sound while we're actually playing the game. We do have sound, but no music. Um, yes, I understand. So, single player, or you can play online. It is a multiplayer game, an MMO. It's one of them. Uh, in It's kind of got an EVE Online kind of vibe to it. It's obviously it's nowhere near as complicated as EVE Online yet. Uh, there is that kind of piracy and antisocial behavior kind of thing going on. But, you know, that's that, that's fine if you want to get your space dickheadness out of... Just, just expel it into space. Uh, first of all, let's have a look at the kind of graphical tweaks we can do in the game settings. Head bob strength, my favorite slider of all time. Uh, hide tutorial. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. This game does not hold your hand and... Like at all, like it's 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 got a personal space issue. It does not want to hold your hand, so you want to keep them on. And you can have a crosshair if you like. Auto stabilization, that's nice. Let's have that, and we'll see how important that is. Controls, lots, lots of controls, and you can remap them all, and it's really good. And good luck memorizing all of these. Uh, you only need a few. Um, Jay, I don't think that's used anymore. But anyway, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Video. So when I first booted this up, this this defaulted to like 20 million uh, resolution, and then it turned like yeah one of them like what uh, and turned all of these down. So I I don't want that. I I'm, I've got a 1080 monitor. Now dynamic downscaling. I don't know. It might be one of you in the comments telling me how great dynamic downscaling is. Uh, I I don't know enough about it, so I'd rather just have my 1080. My my. 1080. I feel safe with that 1080. Fantastic. Very high. All shadows, please. Full screen. Yes. Anti-aliasing. You can do it window uh, borderless if you wanted. Uh, you have to tweak with the I and I, but I, hopefully they'll bring in a, uh, a setting for that. Um, and it's got all of these games built in Unity, and God bless that, right? The amount of crap that is built, well, quote, built, end quote, in Unity, and it, it's it's just some, like, college project that they've thrown on Steam because Steam doesn't care about quality control anymore, and it's just, just, just throw it on there, throw it on, call it early access, you're never going to finish it, but whatever, call it early access, do it in Unity, whatever, blah, 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 rubbish, 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 rubbish. This game is not rubbish. This game is in quite a nice state. Uh, it is in alpha. There are bugs. I have been called out a few times by bugs, um, but... I do believe that they are going to push this Unity engine to the limit um, and, and, and and really do everything that they can with this. I love this music, by the way. Uh, so yeah, we've got that so far. We've got that so far. Audio, bit bare bones. Um, there's no support uh, for 5.1 setups. Um, I am using surround sound headphones, uh, but we, it's not really that important at this stage. Right, so there we are. You can do a single player game, but the story behind the single player is a bit interesting in itself, actually. So, if we just click play online, there'll be a bit of a wait. There'll be a bit of a wait. I, f I, I regret clicking it now. This is going to take forever. Oh, I'm going to have to... Uh, oh! Oh, it didn't! Okay, right. Uh, so, we go official. This game has got a lot of servers running. Um, yeah. 
Very good. Obviously, I'm on E Europe West number three at the moment, which has got six people on it. Uh, yeah, it's 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 not got a load of people. And to be honest, that's that's good. You can rent your own server as well, um, which is you know if you want to do that, fantastic. But the the single player game. So uh, if we just click standard, uh, and then we could start a new game. Uh, oh, is this just going to start a new game? I thought there'd be another screen. Is there going to be another screen? Or are we going to have to go back? <laughs> oh, I've mucked up. My first video of the summer, I've mucked up already. Uh, oh, there was an instant screen. Right. So, the idea, it, when, when we go to play online, we will be doing online in this video. Um, it's that you, Basically, you create your own server that's just for you on your computer. Everything else is identical. Um, so, I think that's pretty cool. Um, some people are already shouting off on it um, because people like to shout off on everything and say oh, why, why don't you just put the time into the game instead of making a single player mode but I think having a being able to have a single player mode in a multiplayer game is is really good it's fantastic it's something that Elite Dangerous uh, missed a trick on but I understand with the economy and stuff that they've got so it's a bit different but I'll be covering that in another video later on down the line so do stay tuned um, but yes we're about to jump in we're about to dive in to Helion, uh, but before we do that, what's this game about? What 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 is Helion? What's the story? Uh, and to answer that question, we're going to show you a trailer. Here it is. Helion. for goods. I'll check the command module. Roger that. We're on it. There's nothing here. The place is dead. Let me check the bridge, and we're out of here. Alright. Suddenly I grew so tired of you Down here it can be beautiful, beautiful So that's the deal. Colonization effort to Helion went completely tits upward. And now you are a colonist, a survivor, uh, who's just come out of your cryopod. And you need to not die. That is the primary objective. So we're going to go back onto the Europe West server. I did have a character loaded up on there, but... Um, that didn't go very well. So we want to start again. We want to start brand new, and then we can go through some of the um, uh, some of the key mechanics. So I could be this guy, or I could be this lady. I'm gonna be this guy because I'm a guy. 
pretty decision was made before birth, really. Uh, if the decision was the other way around, I'd probably be speaking in a much nicer way. Um, and I'd be this lady. But I'm not this lady, because I'm this guy. I'm going to confirm the fact I'm a guy. So, yes, c you can continue. Obviously, it is it is a server-based game, so it, you, your character continues to exist whilst you're logged off. So you can be mucked about with by other players whilst you're logged off. I think that's kind of cool. Um, but if you, if you don't, then go single player. Uh, we're going to go fresh start. You wake up after a century in cryo, just one of the many colonists on their journey to Helion. As your consciousness returns and you finally open your eyes, you find yourself in a small module, barely even a lifeboat. Let us now begin. Loading times are quite long in this game, but give it a break, it's only in alpha. And we're in. This is the first thing you will see, no matter what. Um, this is probably the most buggy part of the whole game so far. Uh, we get frame drops, all kinds of stuff. I don't know what's happening in the background. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I do like the fact they bother to render your body. Um, I guess that's because it's it's uh, it's an MMO. Uh, Maxi Boy says Outpost 19. Great. Uh, we're going to press F on the green button. You do that. You do a lot of pressing F on green buttons. And then it's going to take 100 million years. But eventually there'll be a little uh, premiered animation of, of me climbing out. Um, Maxi Boy, you're going to be on, on, on YouTube forever. I keep pressing this button. As I said, this is the buggiest bit of this whole game. I can't get out! This is the end of my journey. It's the end of my journey. Woke up, couldn't get out of the cryopod. Died. I'd love to do that. Oh! Oh, here we go. Okay, here comes the animation. Very slowly. Ah. Right! Helion! Here we are! We've got a shadow. Look at me, all badass. Oh yeah. So we've got some stuff here. Welding tool. Uh, ooh, yeah, it's always it's always the same. That's a bit bright. Ah. Oh. Um, pressure suit and a stim pack. That looks very Star Trek. If you pick up anything before the pressure suit, the game bugs out and you can't ever pick up anything again uh, because you can't get it out of your hands without throwing it across the room, which is quite funny. Uh, also, the frame rate seems to be a bit erratic. Uh, hopefully, we'll be all right with that. Um, and we're not going to have horrible sync issues when we do the video. Um, we'll see how it goes. There's lots of little nooks and crannies that you can interact with and put stuff in. Um, like, you've got a bed. You can't ever use it yet, but it, it, it's there. Uh, but yes, let's put on our suit. And now we're in a suit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Moonwalk 360. Oh yeah. Right. Stem pack. Welding tool, hold tab, inventory. There's our stim pack. We can put it in, and then if I were to, to left click, it would use that. Oh, got a little bit of little bit of graphical thing going on. It's all good. I've put everything on maximum. I don't know how how well the engine can can take uh, its at this level of development. Uh, we've spent a lot of time in this room. Let's let's put that away. Let's put that away. Can we put that away? Can we put that away yet? I don't think we can put that away. We've put it in our hand. I, okay, I think I think we're gonna have to. I'm gonna press G. We're gonna drop it, and we're gonna pick it up again. There we are. Marvelous. I'm gonna sneeze. I'm gonna sneeze in the video. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. There we are. Okay. Right. Doors. Automatic doors. Fantastic. Oh. Oh crap. Oh, oh. We've got spaces for everything. So we start off in this little crew compartment bit. And we've got a, ooh, a fire extinguisher on the wall. Love that. Take that. And um, there's loads of little nooks and crannies and benches and things like that. Uh, so we've got a slot for a basketball hoop with uh, the um, Asian writing. I don't know what language that is. Um, and uh, something there. Green. Green light. Oh, there it goes. It's a slot for pictures. We've got a picture. Close that. Lovely. And here we are. So we've already got a pressure suit. So if we were to do that, we'd just, like, you know, just, just be... Rolling around with it. You can put it back. Because that's a specific slot for that item. So if you have that item and you want to store it somewhere, you can put it in one of these interactive slots and it will be there. Uh, let's get a let's get a helmet. 
We don't have a... Oh, oh we're gonna die! Open the visor, because the visor's not connected to anything. We are getting lots of frame drops here. Right, jetpack. Need one of them. And that's everything. We've got everything we need. This computer, I imagine, will do something at some point. Not at the moment. We're getting a lot of graphical artifacting. Uh, I don't think it likes being recorded. This is, uh, it's not as good as it once was. Uh, we've got a mini beer fridge. Uh, well, uh, for, for stem packs. You know, close that. We've got a battery pack. And just, just, just stuff. And that's, that's another slot. You could just, just put stuff down there. And in that little cupboard as well. And I like that. Because, you, you, you know, it's all about customizing. Now, exit. Let's go through the door. Let's go through the door. I don't... Well, you can lock the door. I like that. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Let's open the door. Main room. Doors have closed behind me. Had a little bit of air pressuring going on. We're getting lots of frame drops. Uh, press L. We've got light. That's because we've got our little helmet. Access point, nothing in there at the moment. But if I wanted to, I could just manually throw some stuff in there. And we can see these doors. Now the door won't, or the door will open. But the minute I step through, whoa, 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 we threw a key. And it goes all Newtonian. So we can roll, we can go up, we can go down. We can do everything. It does take a hell of a lot of getting used to. You can press shift when you're near any objects to, quote, grab onto it, and that just stops you, which is great. Thank you for the warp cells, bro. That's, you're very welcome. Uh, artificial gravity control. Ah, uh, lovely. Now we have artificial gravity. So, we just came out of there. That's where our little, that's where we came from. That's our little crew quarter. But here we are in another space. We've got lots more suits and stuff. Another stim pack there, which we're now, um... Stacking in our stim pack slot in our suit inventory. Power supply, uh, a distress call beacon, and call rescue ship. Uh, and because it's an MMO, I can press a distress call beacon and it will actually uh, start to broadcast a distress beacon to everyone else who may come and help or may come and destroy me. So we're going we're to keep quiet for now. Uh, fire extinguishers on the wall as well. Um, we'll go over the purpose for those in a moment. And then corridor B. And look, something has appeared. Say, make sure your blah blah is blah blah. As in, you've got a helmet on because out there is space. And we will be going to space, ladies and gentlemen. We will be. But before then, that's very slowly. <laughs> Come out. And let's have a look at what we can do. So, we're in this, this chamber at the moment. Uh, we've got a slot there to recharge uh, our rifle, battery, or jetpack. That's good. We've got a couple of these cans here. We've got a cargo terminal as well. Hmm. We've got these cryopods. If I press F on a cryopod, I can invite other people to join me on my little space journey. Love it. I'm going to set a spawn point for this place here. So there we are. That's, that's where I'd appear. And there's another one over there. So we can get a whole team of bros or, or sisters in. Gender neutral is space. Um, and refined resource canisters. What, what's the deal with those? We can only carry one at a time. We can see on on the, the, the dual alley itself, it's got ice and dry ice and nitrate minerals. There's a little slot for that here in the cargo terminal. So we're just going to press F on there. It's a cargo attach point. And then we can go over to our cargo terminal. And there are loads of little little screens like this. Just press F. It comes up with this nice little interface. Um, and we can see, if we click attach point, there's all this stuff in there. Ice, dry ice, and nitrates. As we saw on the thingy. We can unload it all. Now we've emptied that canister. And we've put it. So this is where we are. We're in outpost 20 golf 003. That's where we are. That's, that's our signifier. Uh, and we've now got all this stuff. Ice, regolith, nitrates, and dry ice. Brilliant. Now that's an empty canister. It says empty. Don't want it anymore. Press G. Drop it. If I wanted to, I could fill that with stuff that I find in space. We're not in space yet. One thing at a time. Let's get the other one. Pop that in there. That one's blue. I like that. I like the blue one better. I don't know why. It's just blue. It's, it's more elite. So, attach point. We've got hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So, these are refined gases. Uh, we'll unload that. And we can have a look at what we've got. 
in the vessel. So nitro, that's used for propulsion for ships. Oxygen is used to make air, surprisingly. Nitrogen is used to uh, put stuff in fire extinguishers, uh, which is quite funny. I quite like that. Um, and air itself. Now, we do have some air because we're not dead, uh, but we don't have any excess air. So if we lose pressure, we're kind of bollocks. Um, there's also a refinery. And refinery, we use the stuff. Like, we've put ice in there, all of the ice, and maybe some regolith. Uh, it goes up to 100, uh, 100 units of, of stuff, and then we can press refine. But we can't press refine yet. Why? Because we've got no power. <gasps> Tab out of that. Power? P sounds like a job for the power supply terminal. Also, it's very dark in here. So let's, let's get the power supply terminal on. Let's click the deploy button on our solar panels that are that come included in outpost 20 golf 003 so we're going to deploy those and it's going to power up and then and then and then uh, there we go so we are now generating 443 something of power uh from our our dual alleys and we've got a catalyst that increases power up by 50 percent that's a little module uh, it is currently on the outside of the hull, near the solar panels, and it's going to be doing all this stuff, which is excellent. Love that. So we've got some connected vessels. Now, connected vessels, that's going to be very important. We'll come back to that. Here's where we are in our outpost, and it's got these systems on it. An air filter, an air generator, and a refinery. We're not using anything at the moment. Everything's offline. Base consumption is, uh, so that's like the gravity and the lights and stuff like that, is 100. I'm just going to call it watts. It's probably going to be more than that. Kilowatt. Let's call it 100 kilowatts. That maybe is a bit more realistic. It's 100 kilowatts of power. We're generating 443 kilowatts. So we've got a surplus of 218. Uh, and of course, uh, the base consumption of the this unit, which is the crew quarters module. What's the crew quarters module? Well, that's this bit. Through this docking port A. Crew quarters. This is the bit. This is a whole different bit. And if we wanted to, we could jettison this bit out into space. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the key factors in this game. And we're gonna we're gonna see that now. First, well, I say now, in a moment. First, oh a little box. Anything in the little box? No. We've got these little bits and doolallies that we can see. I'm wearing a helmet now. Shadow power. Uh, see what we've got in here. Ooh, what's it there? Cargo filters. Not cargo filters. Carbon filters. That I can't... I, I, I can't... I can't get in there. Those are carbon filters. You use those for a life support system. Let's close that up. Seal that up. Oh, 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 oh. It does not like being recorded. Uh, right, life support. It's another little computer thing. Oh, we just... I think we're in a debris field, but well, we'll cover that in a minute. So we can see here in the life support system what's going on. So we're generating all this power, and it's filling up our battery. Uh, hello. Um, air filter and air generator. We're taking impact. Um, do different things. So we can see here uh, gravity, pressure measured in bar. One bar is equivalent to surface pressure on the good old planet Earth. Air quality. Uh, is how much carbon dioxide is there? You know, have you, have you watched Apollo 13? It's a good film. Need need that to be good. Um, and then temperature. Temperature's a factor that's not currently in the game, uh, but they are going to put that in there because obviously space is cold. Um, I'm imagining this is measured in centigrade. Otherwise, if it's Fahrenheit, that's damn cold. Uh, so centigrade for the win. Air generator will generate air for our air tank. We use that to pressure different compartments. We can depressurize certain compartments. So if you remember um, the little hallway between our crew area where we started and this space here, that little hallway, we can depressurize that. And the air from that is now being pumped out and popped into our air tank. But you can see it's also affecting the main room. Why is it affecting the main room? Because there's an open door. So we'll stop that. We'll repressurize that. That's going to take the air out, back out of the air tank, and pop it back in those areas. So you can you can fiddle. You can do all kinds of stuff, and it's it's just it's brilliant. Um, so obviously, if we were to jettison, the set, those doors aren't open. 
you can see, uh, environmental monitoring in this area. We are in the debris field, that's why we keep getting battered around by things. Um, door control. Perhaps it's, it's why there is that, that bit there. So yes, I'm not gonna pull that. That might be bad, but we can just completely jettison this whole module and separate them. But, oh, let's, let's go back to our refinery because we've now got some power so we can refine stuff. So we see we're gonna refine the ice regolith and nitrates that we popped in the refinery earlier. We're gonna click refine and it's gonna start generating oxygen and hydrogen, which we can then use to create some air. Fantastic. Uh, people keep talking uh, on my video. Stop doing that. Anyway, let's go into space. So here we go. Whoa, zero G. Zero G, we can see now that uh, this door has locked. Well, it's not locked, but we're not near it. It's an automatic door. Uh, we're going to go over here. And we can see there is a door control switch there. If I pull the switch, it'll open the door. But notice we haven't got a visor down. This room is fully pressurized. We can't depressurize it because it's not an airlock system. There's one bar of pressure in here. So we're gonna have trouble if we open the door, but we do need to open the door to, you know, play the game. So we're gonna put our visor down. We're gonna press shift to grab on to something without using a hand, but whatever. Uh, and we're gonna open this and then stuff's gonna happen. And indeed stuff is going to happen. In the next episode of our Hellion playthrough, I don't want to make a, like an hour and a half video, so we're gonna, we're gonna take a break. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click that big thumbs up button. If you didn't, if you thought it was rubbish, click the thumbs down button, but do leave a comment, tell me why. Big props to Associate Producer Harder Than Fire and all of our supporters on Patreon, including Saltson, Leopard, Damien D, Brent, Barry, Douglas, and Byron. If you want to be part of the Patreon club, do have a look at the link that is going to be on your screen very soon. And look towards the stars. Well, especially the next episode of Hellion, which will continue straight after this final frame. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Nova Kane, out.